Totally. So <laughs> I really appreciate to uh, welcome Megan. Meg, Meg, Thank Megan. You. How do you uh, pronounce yeah, it? You can... I'm 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 Meg. Well, I'm Megan, but just call me Meg. It's fine. <laughs> it's Meg, and Meg is uh, like me into bodybuilding prep right now. When is your next competition? Just. Just Seven introduce days. yourself shortly and then we will just dive into yeah, the Yeah, no problem. So I'm Megan Sylvester. I am an IFBB pro from the UK, um, a figure pro. I won my pro card in the bikini class in 2018 and then competed for the first time as a figure athlete in 2020 um, at the Alicante Europa. Um, and then I moved on to do the Romania Muscle Fest a few weeks later. I think that I got, I, well, I got second callouts in the Alicante show, and then I think it was third callouts in um, the Romania. Obviously, gone into a big off season to to put on a lot of size. Hopefully, this season I will break the top ten of my next show. Um, fingers crossed. Um, and then go into another off season to to put on quality tissue to then obviously push for some top placings the next time I actually compete if if that's at all possible but yeah that's me um I'm also an online coach and a body full-time bodybuilder that's just me yeah I just followed your last season mm -hmm. and I am just was so I was so pressed of the quads and <laughs> it's just <laughs> the, the the thing I followed the I just saw the quads and I was like okay follow the journey because I, <laughs> you have such an incredible form i, I guess it's, it's amazing thank you. and you put on 10 kilograms of weight yeah, thank you, right thank now in in comparison i saw it yesterday in your yeah. channel it's amazing thank you thank you yeah 10 10 kilos from last season to this season so a lot of hard work has gone gone into that but definitely yeah. still not where we need to be but one day we will be. I guess the, I guess you're not the person to say that you are on on your top level. I guess yeah. if you are there, you you just think, say it's not enough. Or when when you get to when you get to that level, you can say that you are. I think yeah. until then, you've got to work your way up. So I will keep on working my way up until yeah. I can have some fun on the Olympia stage. Hopefully, one day with some of the amazing big girls. That's yes. the goal. I I um I don't know the word right now because it's a prep brain, but uh, I I am sure that you make it made it make it make it there <laughs> because you. you have so much dedication. It's like I, I can see it, I can feel it if I watch your YouTube videos. Yeah. And um yeah, I will link get a link into the show notes that because make shares so much about the prep and about the online coaching i guess some uh, your life changed a lot since the last two years i guess yeah Do you want to to say something about this because i guess it's really interesting and at this point with the um online coaching yes okay yeah so obviously i knew that i wanted to be um a full-time bodybuilder when I first ever started bodybuilding but obviously at the time I was actually a teacher at the time um a, a physical education teacher and knew that that wasn't with how the education system is in the UK trying to juggle that with being a bodybuilder um especially with trying to be a bodybuilder at the standard that I want to be at wasn't going to happen so I actually moved over to finance and had a full-time job in corporate finance for a long time and um, before I actually then started doing some online coaching um, and I started doing that at the end of 2019 um, and then obviously built up over the pandemic quite a lot of my clients I was, I was very lucky that obviously we not lucky because the pandemic was awful but we had the chance to be able to work from home with my corporate finance job um so I was able to do the corporate finance job alongside building up my online coaching business um and then obviously myself and my partner Cuba who's also my coach and an IFBB pro too um from the UK 
we actually then went into a partnership together. So from the end of 2020 to now, we've actually become MK Elite Coaching. Um, and yeah, seems to be going from strength to strength does the brand, which is uh, really exciting and very promising for the future. Yeah, I, I just, I just, um feel this I know what you mean because for my for me it was the same since lockdown I bit of my own work on my own business yeah. and I guess it's like you you can make everything out of everything it's a bad time of course but you can make the best out of it definitely and there's always there's always got to be a silver lining yes and ah, yes the, that's the word this, yeah this is a well, great like, quote from yeah. Stuart Little <laughs> yeah. yeah I think it'll be I think there's a there's a positive that can come out of every negative situation yeah and yeah definitely online coaching was the positive out of the pandemic <laughs> yes um I I think it's quite interesting if we dive uh, into the your process because I, I really think it's not that easy to work together with the partner in business as well as sports yeah. how do you manage it I, because I'm just following your your videos and you have a such a lovely and calm um, communication yeah it's I, just what I can see from the outside yeah I think um, we're, we're both very different people yeah. um Cuba is quite stressy quite he gets worked up and excited quite easily whereas I'm the opposite I'm quite calm quite chilled and um, I don't really get very angry ever and if there's a stress I just sort it myself and and crack on basically I guess is the is the right word but because we're so different that's why it works really well he brings out obviously good things in me that I don't have in in myself naturally and then I bring out an, another side to him that he doesn't have naturally so it works very well I think if you are too similar that's when it can't work um so yeah but like over the past kind of well been together for four years but obviously over the past kind of year to two years myself and Cuba have just become a unit where he's literally my best friend he he's the person that I'd tell anything and everything to and perhaps that's how it should be in a relationship but I have a lot of friends that aren't like that with their partners and yeah I I, I think it's very hard to come by but we are the best of friends um, we have arguments, we sort them. If there's a problem, we sort it together. Um, so I think that's how it works really well. So do you make uh, real um, such borders into this is relationship and this is coaching and this is yeah, business? Yeah, so we, we def we, I would say that it it's not so much like that anymore in that we don't really feel like things need to be separate because... yeah everything is together now yeah um but as we were building up and especially as we were building up our relationship together things were all very separate to make sure that things didn't cross link things didn't get out of hand things didn't get too much um but now because of kind of the the place that we're at in our relationship things are just very all together mm -hmm. you look very happy so i guess it's working <laughs> <laughs> yeah thank so you. Uh, you said before we recorded that you have a sports background in diving mm -hmm. and so just share some something of your journey till you yes yeah, started with bodybuilding it's yeah, very so, interesting yeah I was eight years old when I first started um diving so the first time I ever got in a diving pool was um which in German is Wasser Springen yeah <laughs> I think <laughs> um so yeah that the first time Tom I heard, springen. there you go you can say it yeah. properly I Tom can't springen. sorry <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah the, the first time I ever got into a diving pool was when I was eight Um, I actually then continued until I was 22 so a long a long time Um, during that I obviously managed to get onto the the great British team I went to the Olympics um, I was European champion and um, I came third in the world um, so yeah that that was kind of wow. I was diving 
do you think it's uh, something I uh, discussed with my coach before that people who have a very competitive sports background anyways if it's some endurance based or diving or something like this have a better foundation for building up a competitive mindset and also body and bodybuilding yeah so I I, I do think that I, I do think that it can be trained um I do think that you can train to become an athlete I think that if you start when you're young obviously it it's a lot easier for you to then translate it over to the next sport that you actually go into and it's not needed to be trained. And that's probably how success from, and progression can happen a little bit quicker because you're not having to train that athlete mindset um, or the kind of dedication and commitment that it actually takes to be good at a sport. But I do think that it is something that can be trained into somebody. It just does take time. So I, I do think that I took to bodybuilding and the commitment, like I say, and, and drive that it does take to, to be successful, obviously because of the, the traits that I had for such a long time, I just was the same person. It's just that it was a slightly different sport. I do think that if you come from a sporting background that was kind of a team sport, I think you do find it hard initially to to then become something that is an individual sport, which bodybuilding is as much as we all have our friends and go to the gym with people. Bodybuilding is, is a very lonely sport. It's a, it's a sport that takes a lot of internal drive. So from yourself, but I do think that obviously you can, you can train those thoughts and feelings and attributes. It's just, it does take time to do that. So having them before you start is definitely a good thing in my opinion hmm. what does bodybuilding means to you so you're just I feel like you are so connected to the whole thing and foundation of bodybuilding not like it's the body you make but all things which are in the background so just share your emotional yeah connection to the sports yeah, so I really like to help people um that's the first thing that comes to my mind. I really like to help people. So the online coaching side of bodybuilding is very in tune with how I am as a person because I like to help people. So the fact that I can do something that I love as a living, as well as also having my competitive edge come out with being a sports person myself within the same kind of thing. It's just, I, I love it. Like I really do. Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't ever not want to be a bodybuilder anymore. Like I can't compete forever because I am a lady <laughs> and that it, it does put a lot of stress on female hormones, female function. Obviously there's lots of things that come into play that, does affect females and obviously as you get older you do sometimes at one point it, you hit a, a wall where you do start to look worse so that's when you don't want to compete but it doesn't mean that you can't be a bodybuilder so I would want to be a bodybuilder forever so I think that that kind of just shows how much it it does mean to me and if that I think that the other question that I always get is if I wasn't with Cuba but I still want to be a bodybuilder and yeah, I would like, I do it for me because I, I enjoy it. So I think that that's something else that I, I do get asked quite often too. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So it's so amazing. I just realized that two days ago that it's so, that I'm so grateful to do this yeah. in, in business and by myself and that you can create your whole dream life. And it's like, then you're sitting there and saying, yeah, it's, I'm I'm there now and yet so now yeah. I'm just recording a podcast together with you that's amazing yeah. Yeah, <laughs> right before my competition and it's yeah, yeah. It's, it's definitely <laughs> a very it's it's something that if you're a person that's okay with being alone yeah and you're 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 happy to just do your own thing I think that it's something that it's it's a sport that's very made for you yeah um, 
and I'm happy with being on my own as well as being with other people and I'm happy to push myself to to get yeah. to where I need to be so I think it allows you to to be that yeah. person that likes to be alone as well yeah and I guess um the great the great thing about uh, online coaching or coaching business and I guess it is not connected to the sports um you attract or choose the people you you work with so you are you are never alone but you attract the people who have some kind of you they are yeah yeah they They are similar similar in a way yeah yeah it's amazing so um just I want to talk about your your season now because we just uh, said the you biked (laughs) weight (laughs) and um how do you approach the whole off-season thing because I'm standing right in front and I have an off-season behind myself and I know there's particular anxieties especially for myself to gain too much weight uh, quote quote but um, yeah how do you approach this because um, I followed your off season two and you're not that you you are not too fat or something like this. You mm-hmm. looked amazing in your off season, but you are you were not scared, I guess, to gain this. No. Or, no. Yeah. So I think that the first thing you've got to remember is that you are going to have to put on weight in the off season to be able to obviously gain muscle. That doesn't mean that you have to get fat or sloppy, and it's probably something that if you have a coach, they will be able to obviously help and assist you with knowing when it's probably time to pull back or not. I think it's just important to remember that it it is temporary and you are going to have to put on more weight probably than what you would if you were a normal person because you are going to try and build some muscle and to be able to do that, you are going to have to have an element of body fat on your frame. Again, that doesn't mean that you are going to be fat, but you are going to get to the point where you do feel a little bit bulky and big and I think that the more times you do it the more times you just become okay with it and I prefer my body in the off season I actually prefer having more curves I prefer having a little bit of extra weight on me there is a point where obviously you don't feel the 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 best because sometimes your clothes don't fit etc um but you you just have to go through the process a couple of times to to feel okay with it and having other people around you that understand it and can help and support you with that I think is is very important as well. Do you think it's uh, for women more difficult to gain that weight in comparison to uh, men? I think that the pressures of the world and society and social media I think that women think that it's not okay to to not look fantastic all of the time but we were just human we're not made to be or look fantastic 100% of the time 365 days a year and I think it's the pressures of that that make people think that it's not okay but it is and yeah people people just need to remember that Hmm. so you just shared a a very interesting post in the last weeks I read it about attachment to the body and the form you have so I I just want to talk about that with you so um in bodybuilding you have that kind of dieting and biking and dieting and biking so you never have something like a form you have sustainable Mm -hmm. so what what do you love about the diet and the bike and then I guess we dive more into the attachment to the body I the thing is it's it's all it's all the same for me so if if you're at one point in your journey you're going to have to have a certain body shape if you're at another point in your journey you're going to have to have a different body shape and it's just about knowing and learning to love yourself at every single point it's like if I was only happy when I was lean then I would only be happy what three months out of the year so 
I, and I've been that person. I've been the person that has only enjoyed it when I'm actually leaning and got a, a, a more thin face. And I was probably more unhappy in the off season, which is the majority of my year. So I think learning to just be okay with the fact that if you are going to be a bodybuilder, you are going to have to change shape. You are going to be different and you're just going to have to look at it as that body is helping me be better for the next time that I do X, Y, and Z. And then kind of a maintenance body or something to su sustain year round can come when you finish competing. Mm. Um, and what do you think about the attachment? So where, how do you manage it to detach? I guess it was not that similar your whole life maybe no, so it, it wasn't it's not a simple thing and I think that as I've gotten older it's it's gotten much easier so I'm 27 now like I, I'm I'm nearly 30 so I've, I've I've been around for for quite a while but I think learning to not care what other people think and learning to only care about the opinion of you and what makes you happy and the people around you who you love and support is the first thing that you need to learn in that way you'll just start not to care and that's not about becoming the type of person that doesn't care in their appearance and not doing things that makes them happy or feel good but just learning to not care about people's opinions that just don't matter because no matter what you're doing somebody's going to have a negative opinion and other people will have a positive opinion and as long as you're happy that's all that matters yeah yeah I just thought about this sentence um I can only be happy if I have this or that form mm -hmm. so maybe you know people like this I guess it's very yeah. difficult to yeah, I think learn more, this yeah I think it's more a mindset if you're yeah, happy yeah. you're happy If yeah. you have a chubbier body, that shouldn't make you happy. If you have a thinner body, that shouldn't make you happy. The mm. the, the happiness should come from in here. Hmm. Yeah, nice. Mm -hmm. um, so bodybuilding is uh, quite a lifestyle. So I guess you, uh, you if you said I'm a full-time bodybuilder, it, I guess it has to be like this uh, to be competitive and professional because there are so many aspects you have to manage so let's talk about routines I guess it's very interesting for people who are not that much into bodybuilding because I guess it's you see the beautiful pictures and the, the shape and maybe the work behind but it's a lot of more work so which things you guess are pretty pretty um yeah interesting to share with people who are not that much into the bodybuilding lifestyle which come when it comes to process progress and results so bodybuilding is probably like no other sport um, or work or job um, in that there's not really a time where you can really just be off It, it's kind of a consistent thing to actually continue to make progress because if you have two weeks off, it's going to set you back. If you have too much food in an evening, it will set you back. Digestion will be bad. You will have bad sessions probably that week. So it's it's about learning that it's a 24-7, 365-day-a-year thing. But with that being said, like people can do it in a different way. Like I like to have a nice structured routine where things are the same each day and that works for me because that keeps me happy. That allows me to feel at ease with my body, feel at ease and, and feel like I'm making progress. And it's just something that I've done forever. It's not just a bodybuilding thing. That's just how I've always been. Other people are different. And I think it's about just learning what works best for you, what helps you make the most progress. Does having a couple of weeks off after your competition help you make more progress in a year because you're able to have that time off before you then go into your next competitive, competitive season or off season? If that works better for you, do that. If not, do it like me. It's about finding what works best for you. But it is a sport where it's all the time. It's not just for kind of nine months of the year. Yeah. Do you have special routines around the day which are every day the same? 
yeah my my, <laughs> my days my days don't differ obviously the only thing that differs is obviously either it's a training day or a rest day so that depends on how many meals I have which depends on what time I actually start eating so like today's is a rest day so my eating starts later because I've got less meals and less things to do but that's the only thing that's different just whether it's a training day or a rest day yeah I do want to share some kind of routines you have so maybe your morning routines yes yeah, so quite morning interesting routine. for people <laughs> yeah my morning routine I wake I do I take my my weight my body pictures to make sure that obviously everything is okay I do that year round not just in prep Um, I then go downstairs get all of my food ready and um, take the dogs out walking come back eat my breakfast wait no before I do take the dogs out I do my work then take the dogs out then eat my breakfast and then come back to work and that's my day it's literally every day every single day and I'll probably continue to do that until I'm an old lady <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it's a, if you love that it's uh, the thing you love so <laughs> just do it um yeah. and I'm interested in the meal planning thing because uh, it, every everybody approaches meals and and diet uh, in a different way and I like the form of meal planning you you share because I guess it's quite um, a way to go if you want to be get better and and if you also want to detach from emotional eating and yeah. I guess it's some some kind of thing people struggle after dieting um, so maybe uh, When, when do you start to eat a meal, like a meal plan? And what do you think is the benefit out of it? So I think that a meal plan is definitely better than something like if it fits your macros, especially when it comes to food issues, um, whether you be a competitor or not, I do think that having structure with your food is really important. That doesn't mean that you need to eat the same things every day, but having like a a set structure whereby you know what's going in your body will help and support you or keep you more proactive it will keep you less stressed because you have a structure you don't have to think about what it is that you're about to eat because then that tends to be where people then deviate from having kind of healthy food choices and they start to have things that aren't quite so healthy which again makes them unproductive it can make them stressed it can create a sense of real focus on the food that makes them happy and um, so a meal plan just allows you not to think about things basically and um, it allows you to have the ability to have different things but just fuel your body with the same amount of macronutrients and macros that then just get rid of that question the questions in your head which yeah. then help the, the food focus so I do think that a meal plan is definitely much better whether you're a competitor or not for sure yeah. but that doesn't mean like I say you have to have the same things each day it's just about improving your knowledge and knowing that obviously if you're having 100 grams of turkey you could have something like 130 grams of prawns that will give you the same thing and it's just more about a knowledge standpoint really Yeah, and I guess even for digest digestion, it's uh, quite yeah, much better. Better. Yeah. So I, I I used to uh, save calories uh, so years ago for for the evening, and then I couldn't sleep, and it's like bloating and or and the whole game in the head. I guess it's so destructive for people the whole time to think about. What should I eat? What could I eat? What could I eat if I didn't eat this or that? Um, but do you have some kind of date nights with Cuba where you are off plan eating or yeah, with your family yeah. or some kind of this? How do you approach this in your in your improving season, of course? Yeah, yeah. So every kind of one to two weeks, me and Cuba will have a meal off. We will ah, take a couple of. <laughs> we will take away a couple of meals for that day to make sure that obviously our calorific intake stays the same um, mm. and that keeps digestion good it helps you feel good it, and it makes make sure that obviously your scales don't jump up as well which is super important yeah 
do you think the whole uh, kind of routines and habit and thinking about um, how is my digestion, how is my sleep and how is my whole kind of food around the training could um, slow down the progress of, of your whole self because you're just thinking about and maybe like I'm not that I, I had not much sleep so maybe my digestion is bad and I have a bad training and uh, how do you approach this kind of thing so I guess you are tracking If, a lot of of variables around yeah, your lots day of things that attract but if something isn't quite so good yeah I just think to myself what is it that I can do better next time to make sure that that doesn't happen and then mm -hmm. forget about it and I move on mm -hmm. so anything. just be okay with it Yeah, be okay with things not being okay sometimes. Yeah, yeah, uh, I like it. But I guess it's not that easy to to be to develop a mindset like this. So I I, I see people who are just so much into routines, and if one thing is not that right, the whole thing, the whole day is shit <laughs> yeah I think that taking a step back sometimes yeah thinking about what is it that you can do to make that better and if you can't do anything yeah you need to forget about it okay that's nice so um I I had a, a question just have to look it up um ah it was uh, if you have some uh interests or hobbies besides bodybuilding if you're just completely of that whole life <laughs> um I, I guess I used to I, I used to like gymnastics I used to like dancing I used to I used to like diving so so much now not really mm. I still like to watch those things but I definitely don't have a place to be able to do those things anymore um mm. but no yeah apart from that not really no I'm quite yeah. boring <laughs> I guess it's great because you you just found found yourself into a word you found yourself so just it's amazing so um what is your plan for the next week so I guess you have some one competition too I so just have just... one competition this year um okay. because I need to go back into an improvement season to be better to okay. be competitive um so just this week obviously this we've started week? Yeah, just this week. So we will be obviously doing a carb process at some point. Um, we will be resting. We'll just be getting ready for competition and um, traveling out to Budapest. And Ooh, I love the city. Yeah, me too. Yeah, so amazing. It's one of my yeah. Cities, so yeah, I'm excited. It'll be good. And then yeah. back into an improvement season from the Monday after my show. <laughs> <laughs> well, and what do, do you want to uh, focus on several body parts for your improvement season I think that everything's well balanced now I think well, that, oh yes <laughs> yeah, that everything is it, it, there's not really an area on my body that's bigger than the other um which last year my quads were obviously the only thing that was actually any good um mm. where <laughs> I brought everything up um so it's just a case of now getting everything bigger okay which are the main things you think got you into the improvement of the more balanced body is it some kind of training aspects or the so we, we just we just had more frequency on the areas okay. that needed ah, yeah. it's a, this is really interesting um okay what is the frequency of your of your training sessions now i only i only have three to sorry four to five training sessions but yeah. within the sessions instead of there being kind of yeah. focus on everything so which, full body training yeah there's just now yeah. specific yeah. focus on the areas that needed to come up mm -hmm. so now we can go back to the approach of building things evenly rather than it just being a main focus on kind of one to two areas so do you have some kind of macro planning so throughout maybe one two years what do how do you want to approach your 
whole improvement or do you look like okay uh, this season went like this i looked like that so next season we yeah, approach it think, this way you can have a bigger picture of what you want to achieve yeah. but it's the short-term goals that help you get there so okay. we will do the competition we will sit down and then we will plan i'm excited and i cross my fingers for you thank you <laughs> where <laughs> Where do the listeners can find you? So I, I put the links down, but okay. you can say it. Um, so I have a YouTube, um, yeah. which is literally just my name, Meg Sylvester. I have Instagram, and you can put my handle on there because it's yeah. confusing. It's yeah. Meg Alicia Sylvester, and that's it, really. Okay, that's where nice. you can find me. Do you want to share one or two sentences for the listeners? Maybe something which comes into your mind from your heart. Right now. Um, yeah. So thank you very much for, for listening. If if you do want to become a bodybuilder, you don't have to approach things like me. You don't have to approach things like anybody. What you do have to do is approach it in a way that makes you happy. And that way you make the most progress. I love it. So I just I just take a photo and then you can <laughs> then I I have to do my meal. Not a problem. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. That's okay. I really appreciated this. Massive good luck for your competition. Let me know Thank how you, you get on. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Have a nice day and a good competition. <laughs> Bye. Bye.